In this video, we are going to see how to prepare ethers by dehydration of alcohols. Now, we all know what ethers are, right? It looks something like this, ROR for symmetrical ethers and ROR dash for unsymmetrical ethers. Now, traditionally, ethers are prepared by two main routes, the Williamson synthesis and the acid catalyzed dehydration of alcohols. In this video, we are going to focus on the latter, detailing how primary alcohols under carefully controlled conditions undergo the bimolecular dehydration to give us a symmetrical ether. Now, if you remember, in the previous video, we saw that the acid catalyzed dehydration gave us an alkene. For example, when we heated a primary alcohol like this, ethanol, using a strong protic acid like concentrated sulfuric acid at 443 kelvins, we got the corresponding alkene which is ethene. But if we carried out the same reaction at a moderate temperature, say 413 kelvins, then two molecules of alcohol would combine to form the corresponding ether and water. Now, mechanistically, the formation of ether is a nucleophilic bimolecular reaction, an SN2 reaction involving the attack of an alcohol on another protonated alcohol. Alright, let's look at the mechanism to understand what I'm saying. So, the first step is protonation. An alcohol in an acid catalyzed medium would obviously get protonated first, right? So, here, one of the alcohols OH group gets converted into a better living group, OH2+. Now the second step is a nucleophilic attack. A second alcohol molecule attacks the protonated alcohol in a single concerted SN2 step displacing the water to give us the corresponding product. So here we have a protonated intermediate and the last step is deprotonation where the oxonium intermediate is losing a proton to give us the neutral ether and the acid catalyst is regenerated. But most important thing is that the dehydration of alcohol to form alkenes or ethers takes place under acidic conditions, right? So you can see that because both of these reactions are occurring under acid dehydration conditions, both these mechanisms kind of compete with each other. Yes, the elimination to give an alkene competes with the substitution to form an ether. So the question is which among the two mechanisms dominate? Which among the two is more preferred thermodynamically? So for that, let's look at the reactions once again, but this time a bit more closely, all right? So you can see that in the ether synthesis, two molecules of alcohol gives us two product molecules, an ether and water. But in the elimination reaction, you can see that one molecule of alcohol gives us two product molecules, an alkene and water molecule. So if you try to understand this thermodynamically, we would need to use the Gibbs free energy equation. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Now we know that this equation basically tells us if the chemical reaction is spontaneous or not under constant temperature and pressure, correct? And it doesn't just tell us if the reaction is spontaneous, but when you compare the two reactions and the mechanisms, it gives us an information on which one is more spontaneous under the same reaction condition. So we know this terms here, delta G is the Gibbs free energy change. This needs to be negative in order for the reaction to be spontaneous. Delta H is the enthalpy change. Delta S is the entropy change. And this term, minus T delta S is the entropy term's contribution to the free energy. Now applying this to our acid catalyzed alcohol reactions here, we can see that elimination results in an increase in the number of product molecules. So here, delta S is positive, it is greater than zero. That means as temperature increases, the minus T delta S term becomes more negative and that makes the delta G more negative. In other words, it makes the elimination reaction more favorable at a higher temperature. That is, as we increase the temperature, why? Because this term becomes more negative and this helps make our delta G more negative. On the other hand, in the case of substitution, you can see that the delta S is not significant. You have two reactant molecules and we get two product molecules. This means that the entropy term's contribution is much smaller and less sensitive to temperature changes. And we already know that at lower temperatures, elimination reaction is not favored. And this allows the substitution reaction to become the dominant pathway at the lower temperature. So what's the key takeaway here? That a higher temperature favors elimination reaction giving us alkenes. 
whereas a lower temperature favors substitution reaction giving us ether. Now here we have taken the example of ethanol giving us diethyl ether. But did you know that this reaction was also an industrial favorite? In fact, industrially this reaction was once exploited for large scale ether production although now lately in the modern times it has been replaced by more efficient methods. So till now we discussed the mechanism, the possible competing reactions and the conditions under which we can favor the formation of ether, right? But you know what, it does come with a lot of limitations. You see, this bimolecular SN2 dehydration is effective only for primary unhindered alkyl groups because as we all know, SN2 mechanism requires an unhindered substrate like a primary alcohol. Secondary and tertiary alcohols rarely give ethers under these conditions because they would more readily lose the water molecules on protonation to form stable carbocations than undergo an SN2 nucleophilic attack. We all know that secondary and tertiary carbocations are much more stable than primary carbocations, right? And because of that, they would rather eliminate the water molecule via an E1 elimination mechanism to give alkenes almost exclusively. Thus, dehydration to form ethers is unsuccessful with these substrates as elimination almost always predominates. And that's not the only limitation of this method. You see, we can prepare only symmetrical ethers via acid catalyzed dehydration. Attempting to prepare unsymmetrical ethers via this method would fail miserably. For example, if you try to prepare an unsymmetrical ether like this, ethyl methyl ether, then we would obviously need two different alcohols, right? Ethanol and methanol in the same pot. Ethanol to get this ethyl group and methanol for the methyl group. And this would give us three possible ethers. Ethyl methyl ether, which is yes, a desired unsymmetrical ether. But we also have other undesired side products forming like the symmetrical diethyl ether and dimethyl ether. So clearly you can see that this reaction is not selective because the alcohols can react in any combination via the SN2 mechanism to give us a mixture of products. The most efficient way to prepare an unsymmetrical ether is via the Williamson ether synthesis about which you will learn in the next video. Alright, so to summarize what did we learn in this video? We saw that acid catalyzed dehydration of alcohols provides a straightforward one-step method to prepare symmetrical ethers from unhindered primary alcohols. But this reaction demands precise control of temperature. We also need to be careful about other competing reactions like elimination to ensure that our ether, symmetrical ether is formed in good yields. Alright folks, that's all for now. I hope you understood how we get symmetrical ethers from acid catalyzed dehydration of alcohol and the limitations of this reaction. Let's look at another interesting concept in the next video.